you know, I think what the book was about was a little different than what the original film was about, which, and then our take on it, I think, has expanded and made it something different. But really, I think it's about, uh, it's about evil and it's about vulnerability. And it's about finding um, the way that evil can find people's weaknesses and prey on them and, and use it against them. And I think you see a lot of characters that are believing what they want to believe in order to achieve or get what they want to get. And in the process, you see what they sacrifice to get it. I think our story really gets into the head of each of these characters just a little more. And, 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 our, and our version of it is very different too. I think the characters have all have a, a slight twist on them. Guy in our version is a writer, not an actor. The Castavets are a completely different kind of couple than they were in the original, which I really love because to try and tackle that original storyline and do it in the exact same way, it was done so well. And those actors were brilliant and, 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 it, and it was what it was. And I feel like we can sort of reimagine the story and expand on it um, without doing any sort of disservice to what Roman Polanski did and, and what the original film did. Our version, I think, brings a little bit of the, the, the real horror back in. Uh, there are some moments of real shock and surprise. There's, uh, there's, some, uh, there's violence that, that, that creeps in in a way that I think is really creative and helps sort of build this sort of terrifying world where things are falling apart for these people. And they raise the stakes for each of these characters. Um, but I think it's a little bit of both. And I think the real heart and soul of the story lies in the psychological terror. I think Rosemary's Baby is sort of as classic horror as you can get, and I think we're doing a good job of maintaining that sort of very deep, dark, psychological, um, you know, that, that, that the, the stakes are so, sort of behind closed doors and terrifying, and nobody really knows exactly what's going on, and you're not seeing the devil, and you're not seeing all of these things that are a threat, and I think that, that helps um, create this atmosphere that, that, that's different than what you're getting in your average horror film today. But that being said, I think we take some of the best pieces of that too and instill it into the story, and, and you know, we don't shy away from the fact that it's a scary thing that's going on, and, and uh, the violence that is a part of it is definitely a part of our story. Uh, what we've done with this story um, is we've taken it out of New York, which is the biggest thing. We're in Paris, uh, and, uh, and, and instead of the Castavets coming into a world, and in, I mean, instead of uh, Rosemary coming into a world that um, is sort of just a building and the Castavets some interesting characters in that building, really they're entering into a whole different sort of stratosphere of, of uh, money and wealth, and the Castavets are representative, um, are, are members of this sort of elite society in Paris. Paris. And so that's very different than the original story and it, and it allows us to sort of really take these two fish and put them completely out of water and it destabilizes them from the beginning. Rosemary Woodhouse and Guy Woodhouse are a married couple from New York. Um, in our story, uh, Guy is a writer and, uh, and Rosemary, uh, at the beginning of the story, is found in a hospital and we're having a baby and, uh, and terribly we lose the baby. Um, and it's something um, that sort of devastates them both and sends them packing to leave New York and sort of try and change their lives. Uh, Guy Woodhouse takes a job at the Sorbonne here in Paris to become a writer. And uh, Rosemary is just trying to figure out what to do next with her life. Um, although it's not incorporated into the story, uh, Zoe and I have talked a lot about how Rosemary was likely a dancer at one point, as that's part of Zoe's past as well. So she's sort of, the idea is that she's taken her time uh, and did her, her work for a long time. And now that we've moved here, Guy has decided that he's gonna provide and uh, he's put under the gun and he's trying to do what he can to make enough money to build a life for the two of them, which he's finding increasingly difficult because he, uh, he can't finish his book and he feels stuck and, uh, and, and uninspired and scared. Rosemary's Baby is a movie that people know. It's a story that people know. So you say, we made Rosemary's Baby, and most people's culture, you know, if they've seen the film, or even if they haven't, they know Devil's Baby. So I think there's a level of, there's a challenge for us to help create this world and paint this world um, in a way where people can know what's coming, but also um, have that sort of unknown that you're talking about, to know that maybe this is all in her head. Maybe, uh, you know, if we can help 
if along Rosemary's journey, all of our, us characters, especially Guy, can do our best to convince her that she is freaking out, that there is nothing real going on, then even if you know the answer, it makes for an exciting ride. And I think that that's what we're looking to do with the story. We're trying to um, do our best to tell Rosemary everything's fine so that the audience, even though they sort of know how this is gonna end, can sit there and pray that maybe this is gonna end a little differently for her. Um, and we have an incredible group of people on the set to, to do that with, from the directors, the producers, to or the cast. Uh, and so far, I think we're doing a, a, a pretty good job of, of accomplishing that.